Hello, I'm Di Durbridge from Brown Jacobson's education team and I'm a partner specialising in education law. This video is all about your school admissions appeals, how you manage those, the timetable and what evidence you need to gather. This session looks at the appeals timetable and focuses on evidence gathering to help you ensure successful appeals management. The key document again of course is the School Admission Appeals Code 2012. So let's have a look at what the code says about the appeals timetable. First thing it says is the appeals timetable must be on the admission authority's website by the 28th of February each year. And that timetable is very prescriptive. It must include at least 20 school days from the date of notification for an appeal to be lodged. At least 10 school days notice of hearing, although this can be waived by parents. And then you must provide reasonable deadlines for additional appellant evidence service of admissions authority evidence and for the clerk to send papers to the panel and the parties in advance of the hearing. Finally there is a catch-all that says appeals must then be held within 40 school days of the deadline for lodging appeals. So it is quite a tight time frame but in the majority of circumstances it should be achievable. There has been a change in the 2012 code when we look at the admissions authority case and the appeals papers. Under the old code, the clerk to the appeal had to provide parties with appeal papers, including all parties' evidence, at least seven working days before the hearing took place. There is no such rule now. However, in my opinion, it is still advisable to provide all papers at least five working days before the hearing. That will avoid any challenge from the parents saying that they did not have the papers in good time before the hearing. So what about additional appellant evidence? Again, the code says here that we have to be reasonable. And if we're working on the basis that the clerk is going to send full papers to all parties at least five working days before the hearing, then perhaps a deadline of around seven working days before the hearing would be sensible for additional appellant evidence. This is not set out in the code, this is my suggestion of a reasonable deadline. And what about admissions authority evidence? Again, for me the same deadline would be reasonable, seven working days before the appeal hearing was to take place. What's important for all of these deadlines is to appear reasonable. My suggestion of both parties having to serve evidence in the same time scale does suggest a reasonable approach. So let's have a look at an example. Wednesday 12 June 2013, the appellant provides any additional evidence. On the same day, the admission authority provides its evidence. On Friday 21 June 2013, the clerk circulates the papers to all parties. And on Friday the 28th of June, the appeal is heard. So what documents must be included in the appeals pack? The old code listed a number of documents that must have been included, but the new code is less prescriptive. However, it does list three key issues that must be included in admission authority evidence. Firstly, details of how the admission arrangements apply to the appellant's application. Secondly, reasons for the decision to refuse admission. And thirdly, an explanation as to how admission of an additional child would cause prejudice to the provision of efficient education or efficient use of resources. That information will form part of your prejudice statement. Now I'm not looking at your prejudice statement as part of this session, but there is an additional session on our website which focuses solely on the prejudice statement. So just before we move on to have a look at evidence gathering, outside of the prejudice statement, I just want to take a quick look at questions from parents. I know this is something that can be quite difficult for admissions authorities to deal with. Paragraph 2.8 of the Appeals Code is a little bit unhelpful for us in this regard. It says that admission authorities must comply with reasonable requests from parents for information which they need to help them prepare their case for appeal. What the code doesn't do is explain what it means by reasonable or set out what is required for parents to prepare their case or what is simply information the parents would quite like to have. Some of you have no doubt experienced a significant number of questions from parents. My advice is that you do look to answer as many of those questions as possible, working on the basis that they are necessary to prepare their case for appeal. For all questions, if you do not answer them in advance, then be prepared to answer them at the hearing so that you cannot be criticised for failing to provide parents 
with the information they think they need. My tip on this is to keep a bank of answers. You'll find that you're often asked the same question by parents year on year, and so keeping a bank of answers that you keep up to date will reduce the burden upon you in answering those questions. So finally, let's just explore whether there is any opportunity to adduce other evidence at an appeal hearing. As I've said, we'll look at the prejudice statement in a separate training video. So what we want to look at here is what can we have in support of the prejudice statement. And what I want to focus on is witnesses, photos and DVDs, and a tour of the premises for panel members. So what does the code say about witnesses? Well, the code talks about witnesses for the appellant only. And for me, it is quite difficult to envisage a situation where the admission authority needs to rely on a witness. The admission authority role within an appeal is simply to state its case and rely on its prejudice statement. In terms of delivering the evidence at the appeal hearing, my view is that it is important to have a member of your senior leadership team supporting your presenting officer. The old code made it clear that this was allowed on the basis that the senior member of staff could be there to answer questions only. However, the new code is silent on the point. So it is possible that your senior staff member may be able to go further than simply answering questions. And for me, this is quite important. I think having a senior member of your leadership team at the hearing shows the panel how important school admissions is to your school. Plus, there's also nobody better placed at answering all the questions that will be put to the admissions authority than a member of the senior leadership team. Therefore, it makes sure that all questions are answered and answered strongly by somebody who knows exactly what the position is at your school. So what about photos and DVDs? Can you use them? For me, I think the answer is still no. Uh, there is a 2009 local government ombudsman ruling on this. It was all to do with Nottinghamshire County Council. And the LGO there determined that using photos was unfair because the photos were pre-selected or could be pre-selected by the school to prove their case. They would not be independently verified and those pre-selected images meant that parents couldn't test whether they were accurate reflections or not. For me that's, that seems like quite a harsh ruling, suggesting perhaps that the scores would be disingenuous, which of course is not the case. However, I do not see this changing and I think if an approach was made to use photos and DVDs at appeal hearings now, the LGO would rule in the same way. So is there an opportunity to give the panel a tour of the school so they can understand the physical limitations of your site? Well, unfortunately, the code specifically outlaws this. And it does so because it calls into question the panel's independence and as the code sees it, it does introduce a risk of allegations of lobbying. That was, of course, what the old code said. The new code, again, is silent on the point. But my view is that it is still likely to be frowned upon for the reasons set out in the old code. So for me, it's to be avoided. So in summary, getting your prejudice statement right and dealing with questions from parents is the best way of ensuring you have a strong position at an admissions appeal. Having a member of the senior leadership team at the hearing goes that one step further and really does impress upon the panel the importance with which you take admissions appeals. For me, witnesses, photos, DVDs and tours are things that we still need to avoid for the time being. Thank you for watching this training video. I hope you found it useful. If you would like to make any comment or would like to talk to me about any of the content, then please do feel free to give me a call. You will find my contact details on the website.